bursting again at the seams now, almost going to be a full house again today, so they're doing something right, certainly, but yeah, you want to, you want to kind of go into these national, uh, international breaks with, with a good result on the back of it, and at home against Millwall, you know, the way they've been playing is a game they're expected to win, so again, we talked about expectation late, levels a little bit earlier, that these are one of the games now which Norris are expected to win. Now, before this game gets underway, uh, we are going to have uh, a minute's silence, as we do at uh, the last home game before Remembrance Sunday every single year. And as the teams came out, the, the fans sitting directly below us in the south stand have been asked to hold up uh, red and, and white and black cards to form uh, a poppy mural, which uh, looks pretty spectacular. You've seen a TV shot of it from the other side of the ground. It looks a bit strange here because we're above it looking down on it, and we can just see lots of people holding cards up. But uh, from the other side of the ground, we've just seen a picture on the monitor here. It does look very effective, and football doing its bit to play its part in Remembrance Weekend. Uh, before we have those commemorations and that minute silence, I will just run through the team lineups for you. Tim Craw in goal for Norwich City, Aaron Zimmerman, Closer and Lewis at the back, Chetty and Leitner in midfield with Stephen uh, pushing on, Wendia and Hernandez, the, the wide men, Tuki up front, the subs uh, McGovern, Godfrey, Marshall, Brunchich, Rhodes, Tribal and Cantwell. You made this point earlier, Darren, but when you look at players like Tom Tribal on the bench, Brancic, Rhodes, even Todd Campbell, who's been excellent this season, and Ben Marshall, who Millwall desperately wanted in the summer, maybe this Norwich squad is stronger than a lot of people give it credit for. Well, I think all those names you mentioned probably are Campbell in terms because he's a youngster. You know, they, they were lads that were expected to play a big part of the season for Norwich um, and, and try and push them on. But as you said earlier, it's been those ones that we least expected that have come into the side and done so well. And, and to have those ones we did expect to do well on the bench, is, yeah, it's, it's, it's a full, buoyant squad at the moment, um, but we, we know how fickle this league can be, you know, and there's a lot of games to go, but certainly whilst they're playing as they are, they can keep plugging away, you know, even, you know, just not losing today is, is no disaster, it's just making sure you're picking up those points. Give you the Millwall team, uh, Amos in goal, they'll play with Conor McLaughlin, Sean Hutchison, Big Jake Cooper and Murray Wallace at the back, holding midfielders of Sean Williams and Ryan Leonard. Uh, they will have Jed Wallace and Shane Ferguson on the wings and a front two of Lee Gregory and Tom Elliott. Um, uh, they look a little bit like a rugby team, some of these Millwall players. Um, the ground has fallen quiet because we're about to have uh, the uh, commemorations to mark at Remembrance Weekend. The players Today have gathered around uh, the centre circle. This has become a traditional part of uh, football as we... Uh, head towards Remembrance Sunday, 100 years, of course, on from the end of the First World War. The players now standing arm in arm uh, around the halfway line. The mascots and the officials standing head bowed on halfway. Uh, we've had uh, members of the military services inside the ground from the Queen's Dragoon Guards and the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. They formed a guard of honour and laid wreaths in the centre circle. And we are going to have two minutes silence at Carrow Road before this game starts. During the silence, the last post will be played by Eddie Baker.
always poignant when a football ground with 25, 26,000 people in falls silent. And uh, there's something that has become a traditional part uh, of football at this time of the year, the commemorations of uh, football paying its respects. I mean, you'll see that scene up and down Norfolk, even uh, the Sunday league games that are played. I remember walking through Eaton Park and I remember a Sunday last year and seeing uh, teams at that level doing uh, exactly the same as we've just done at Carrow Road. But it's Chris, you, you look around here and there's you know, 25, 26,000 people and the place looks absolutely packed and you think about 10 million people getting killed in the First World War. Um, just unthinkable, isn't it? Really is unthinkable and so poignant. And um, yeah, the hairs in the back of the neck stand up. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the more people in a place, the, the more poignant the silence is. And uh, there won't be too many places in Norfolk over the weekend where you'll get this many people all, all standing silently at the same time. Uh, we're just about ready then for the start of this game. The only bit of championship action at Carrow Road in November of this year. And will it end with Norwich City back on top of the championship? They're in yellow and green, and they're defending the Barkley end in the first half. Millwall all in this very dark blue strip, and already hunting a long ball forward. And the first thing you do notice, without wishing to point out the obvious and go for the stereotypes, is how much bigger many of the Millwall players are than, than the Norwich City team. We'll talk about that in a moment with Darren Eady, as Gregory, the Millwall striker, holds the ball up uh, on the left-hand side. Plays it back here to Shane Ferguson, it's infield to Williams, and it's Millwall on the front foot first, a four-ball forward there, and it goes for a goal kick. Now, you're ideally placed here, Darren, um, to talk about when you come up against a team that's big, that's powerful, that relies on the long balls, how do you deal with that? Well, actually, it can play into your hand sometimes if, um, you know, a, a good little and sometimes does beat a good big, and I think sometimes, you know, if you've got that pace and that quality on the floor in terms of your... Your, your agility, you know, that can certainly play a, a, a better part against a big, stronger outfit. And um, Norwich, technically, I would imagine, are a better side than, than Millwall. Um, Millwall obviously win the, the battle against the power, so that's, in the ten, you know, all tents and purposes, you've got to keep the ball on the floor and move it around them. Well, Millwall are 19th in the championship, so with Norwich being towards the top, that, that tells you something, I suppose, that Norwich shouldn't be too intimidated. Millwall, they have won three of their last five matches, and that earned Neil Harris, their manager, a nomination for manager of the month in October. Daniel Farker didn't get one, <laughs> despite where Norwich are in the table. But uh, he, he says he wasn't worried about that. I think he'll uh, just hope that the football does the talking today. Steekman is dispossessed on halfway. Uh, Norwich defending this Barkley end in the first half. It's chipped up towards to Tom Elliott, the striker, who is one of the, the six foot plus, uh, signed from AFC Wimbledon a couple of years ago. Couldn't quite get on the end of that one. And Norwich uh, with Cruel rolling the ball out. And there's Leitner hitting a long ball of his own forward. That one's dropped in behind the Millwall defence for Hernandez to chase. He's in the penalty area to the right of goal. Can't quite get it across to Puki. And it's cleared away by Millwall up towards the halfway line for Gregory to chase. Jamal Lewis will keep it in. Or, in fact, he'll decide not to keep it in because it's going out for a Norwich throw in. I think that's a better opportunity than probably Hernandez thought it was when he received that ball in the 18-yard box. He could have held onto the ball just a little bit longer, decided to try and cut it back for... Puki was kind of nowhere near him at the time. If he'd have just waited and bided his time, he had plenty of touches on the ball, he could have got a little bit more support. Leitner in possession. Nice little flick to Lewis on the left-hand side. Still inside his own half, turning away well to get the ball to Hernandez, who started on the left wing for Norwich today. Careless pass from Steeperman, and Norwich have given possession away. And Millwall try to come through the midfield. It's turned out towards Murray Wallace, their left-back. He's going to play up early, diagonal ball towards the edge of the penalty area. Closer gets the better of Elliott, the ball drops down though on the edge of the Norwich penalty area, eventually comes to Elliott who uh, tries a shot and it's way, way off target. But again, nothing unexpected, I think. As soon as the ball found its way to Wallace, Murray Wallace on the left-hand side, Darren, you were signalling with your hand there as if to say, you know, know where this ball's it. going. Yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're only three minutes in, but already you can see the pattern of play that Little Moore were looking to do, get it into their full-backs and wide areas and hit those long diagonals into the big men up front and try and support off the knockdowns and you know, it's very effective and, and already you've seen closer and Zimmerman both having to win headers and centrally in their 18-yard box and they're going to have to do a lot of that today. Well, you only have to go back to the den last August to see how effective it can be when Norwich were hammered 4-0 by Millwall very early on in Daniel Farker's reign uh, as Norwich almost give the ball away there. Slack play inside their own half, doesn't matter who you play against, you can't give it away there very often. McLaughlin on the right-hand side for Millwall. Now they do just uh, play the passing game of their own back to Hutchinson, the centre-half, who now does launch one forward, looking for Tom Elliott, but closer again, getting the better of him, and Norwich have possession back, and here's Tetty, who was brought back into the Norwich starting lineup after that defeat against Millwall last season. Seemed as if he wasn't going to feature very much under Daniel Farker to begin with, but that Millwall match was certainly a blessing in disguise for Tetty. As the ball goes to the right-hand side, and Norwich now carefully work their way into Millwall territory, 
The ball played to the right, and Ahrens, who's full of confidence at the moment, onto Buendia, level with the penalty area. Cooper, the big centre-half, has come to meet him. Buendia holding him off here very well, and finding Leitner on the right corner of the box. Out it goes again to the right, Buendia crosses, it takes a couple of deflections and goes behind, and Norwich have won the game's first corner. We've talked about Millwall's danger from set pieces, but what about uh, at the other end? Huddersfield have taken the lead against West Ham in the Premier League. Alex Pritchard, the former Canary, has scored that goal. Corner to Norwich, four and a half minutes in at Carrow Road. Coming in from the right-hand side, delivered towards the near post, headed away by Ferguson. Uh, and uh, they've dealt with that Millwall and will perhaps fancy a, a counter-attack here because Gregory's done well, plays the ball forward and Norwich City have been caught out here. Uh, Leonard uh, a little bit reluctant to really go for it here and the ball has been eventually played back towards the halfway line. It, it was actually Jed Wallace who picked that ball up. I don't know why he didn't just go there. Oh, I just had, he had, you know, he had the opportunity, didn't he, just to take it on his right foot, drive in towards the 18-yard box and get a shot away. I'm not quite sure where he cut back into the defenders and slowed all the play down. And Millwall now getting the ball to the edge of the penalty area and Lee Gregory. Gregory shifts it back to Williams, now Elliott on the edge of the box. It's all come from Norwich having a corner and Millwall have now come on the attack. Poor ball from Ryan Leonard, behind it goes for a goal kick to Norwich City. At Ipswich are a goal up at Reading uh, through Guion Edwards. Paul Lambert's first away game in charge and it's Newcastle 1, Bournemouth 0 in the Premier League. So goals flying in uh, already up and down the country. Uh, not here at Carrow Road yet, Norwich 0, Millwall 0. Darren, that, that was um, a bit of a let-off for Norwich there, wasn't it? Jed Wallace, just having been set away very well by Millwall, had the, the, the Norwich half of the field pretty much to himself and was just reluctant to take it on. Yeah, I think you, the only thing you, excuse you could give him is he knew there was three Norwich defenders running back towards him and I think he needed some support. He didn't fancy probably his own pace to get on and, and take him away from all three defenders, so he needed that support and cut back and, and wait for that. But you see the frustration afterward, he sort of looked at the floor, realised he, he probably took the wrong option. Leitner plays the ball onto Stieperman, stretching, looking for Puki. The ball's fallen for Leitner, who turns it sort of towards Puki, but it's just bounced away from him and gone through to the goalkeeper, Ben Amos, once of Manchester United. Uh, now with his 10th club, Ben Amos, a lot of loans in that time. In fact, he's on loan at the moment from Bolton and uh, called into action there for the first time. It, it was just away from uh, Puki, though, that one, wasn't it? There's been a try at Twickenham. England are 5 0 up against New Zealand uh, in the rugby, which I know. Darren is a big rugby fan, we'll be interested in him. We'll keep you up to date with that one. Millwall on the attack, the ball has been steered towards Jed Wallace, right-hand edge of the penalty area, hits cross towards Elliott, that's a really brave header away from Zimmerman. And uh, Elliott is putting himself about early on, the big target man up there for Millwall. Norwich so far are dealing with him well. Uh, but it's a, a battle they're going to have to keep on top of in this game. Well, already it's intriguing, a real clash of styles. Seven minutes played, goalless at Carrow Road. Norwich now work the ball away to the left-hand side. It's O'Neill Hernandez, the winger. He's called up to the Cuba squad this week. Cuts in from that left-hand side. Gives it to Buendia, 25 yards out. Nice pass towards Stieperman. Left edge of the penalty. Gets the ball across, and the goalkeeper's there before Puki. It's uh, an open game, this, isn't it? No, uh, I'm not sitting back. I was just going to say that, Chris, we're seven minutes in, and actually it's been probably one of the most entertaining seven minutes we've seen at the start of game at Carrow Road. For quite a while, it's been um, yeah, it's been good. Two contrasting styles, as you say. Norwich like to get the ball down and move it around the pitch. Millwall a little bit more direct, but but it's very effective so far already. We can see that, that to Zimmerman and, and Closer in particular are going to have a difficult day to to kind of you know battle against that for for a 90 minutes. Ipswich's lead didn't last long at the Medeski. It's now Reading one, Ipswich one. Well, Mate with equaliser for Reading there. The ball's been passed out by Norwich City. Poor place, uh, poor pass for a throw in to. Millwall, which McLaughlin, the Northern Ireland international right back, will take. And he will lift it on for Elliot to win the knockdown. Gregory trying to get away from closer, but the Norwich player of the month has put the ball out for a throw in. Closer not taking any chances there. I think he and, and Christoph Zimmerman are, are going to earn their two week break from the championship today well, because Gregory and Elliot are right in their faces, aren't they? Well, it's important for Teddy as well to make sure he does, he does stay back and, and protect that back too, as well, for the knockdowns. Here comes a long throw which Ryan Leonard is going to take, the midfielder who's on loan from Sheffield United. It's launched towards the penalty area now, it's bounced into the six-yard box, closer, eventually gets there, takes a push in the back and wins a free kick, but it's, it's another big weapon, this, that Millwall have got. Ryan Leonard taking that long throw in, really propelling it into the penalty area, and Daniel Farker talked about this yesterday, it's something that Norwich have got to be aware of and got to deal with. Well, I think if you look back to when Norwich started the season and even particularly into last season as well, when they were vulnerable, it was those long balls into the box when teams put them under pressure early, got the ball forward quickly and caused problems. And already 
We've seen sort of four, maybe five long balls into the box from Millwall, and uh, the knockdowns, fortunately, so far have fallen to Norwich to be able to clear. But you know, you have to make sure you you, you keep your your concentration up for that 90 minutes. Long kick from Krull, helped on by Steeperman. Well, the ball batters between Steeperman and Puki, just left it to each other, and Millwall have been able to clear the ball upfield. High, closer, getting himself underneath it, heading it up in the air and away, and it's a Millwall throw in. And although it is only halfway inside the Norwich half, um, I wonder for a moment whether they might try another one of these long ones, but instead it's going to be McLaughlin, the right back, who's going to come into the Norwich half to take this throw in. Lift it towards the edge of the box, helped on by Elliot into the area. Gregory, the other striker, seizes it for Millwall. Right edge of the box, now finds Jed Wallace, whose cross is blocked by a Norwich hand. Uh, no handball, it's sort of hit the hand, and it's gone behind and will be a Millwall corner. And uh, here's a, a test for Norwich City then. They'll send up Jake Cooper from the back. Cooper's got a couple of goals already this season. He's probably the tallest player in their they, team. I mean, they're huge, isn't they? You do look at them, and it, we, I know we're a long way away up this gantry, but you can see, compared to the Norwich side, just how, how big they are. Here comes the corner, which Williams will take from the right-hand side for Millwall. Played into the Norwich penalty area now, towards the far post, headed back towards the penalty spot, and Buendia is there to clear, and not just clear, he's actually played it nicely into the path of Puki. And the Finnish striker will bring it away from the Norwich penalty area and up towards the halfway line, where he loses possession. Ipswich are back in front at Reading. Freddie Sears, the goal scorer. Reading won Ipswich two. Plenty of goals in that one. Nothing here yet at Carrow Road. Ten and a half minutes played. Norwich have dealt with the first couple of Millwall set pieces, though. That's well cut out by Jamal Lewis. Norwich have possession. Halfway inside their own half. It's played to Leitner, the German, who carefully brings it into Millwall territory. It's dropping, dropping off him a little bit there, just allowing him to bring it well forward. Even Elliot, the striker, was tracking back and making it difficult for Leitner to find a way through so they've gone back into their own half here Norwich to try and work a different angle for the attack it's a classic 4-4-2 for Millwall as well isn't it looking at their back four at the moment they've also got Puki and Hernandez and Buendia trying to pull them about but they're very resolute in terms of their positioning sitting as a back four and a midfield four and a two two big well not one big man up front looking it down for the, knocking it down for the little man and it's Teti who surges through the midfield for Norwich City on the halfway line works it towards Buendia two in two league games for Buendia who really has uh, settled in much more quickly to the championship than a lot of players who, who come to it from abroad. It's been impressive. There's Max Ahrens on the right-hand side. Now Leitner angles the ball across the field there. It'll be easily cut out by McLaughlin, the defender, the right-back for Millwall. And played into the feet of uh, their captain today, Jed Wallace, who steers it to one of the big, big men in the team, Jake Cooper. Now Williams in the midfield for Millwall. And McLaughlin on the right hand side, the Northern Ireland International. On to Jed Wallace. This is nice football from Millwall, actually. They've worked it calmly into Norwich territory, but Norwich are well set, well organised, so Millwall have to go back again. And it's uh, with Cooper on the edge of his own penalty area. Came very close to breaking into the playoff positions last season, Millwall. Lost a couple of players since then, notably the, the midfielder George Savile has gone to Middlesbrough. And that uh, has kind of shaken it up a little bit for them. Swansea have gone 1-0 up at Bolton. Bolton nil, Swansea 1. Norwich go to Swansea after the international break. So the fact we go to Wales after the international break means that there's even international flavour about it when Norwich do return to, to Championship action in a fortnight's time. 0-0 here. BBC Radio Norfolk at Carrow Road in the 13th minute. And we're waiting to see whether Norwich City can get their fifth straight Championship win. Long ball played forward by Norwich this time. Steepman cushions it down to Buendia, <laughs> eventually they work it out to the right-hand side, but it was so awkward for Ahrens, he kept the ball in with the head, but in doing so has only been able to give it to Millwall, and the team from South London now have possession of the ball, with Cooper back on the edge of his own penalty area, and Williams in the midfield. Millwall enjoying more of the ball than a lot of teams do when they come to Carrow Road, as the away team. They've hit one into the channel here for Jeff Wallace to hook into the penalty area, Gregory makes it his, McLaughlin now crosses from the right-hand side, up in the air from closer, but not away. It falls for Gregory, who hits a volley from the edge of the box and scuffs it uh, away and behind. And it's uh, a corner has been given. It must have got a deflection. But uh, you don't see too many people complaining. Closer's not complaining. So perhaps it did take a little nick on the way through. But 
a little bit too much respect, I think, shown to Millwall at the moment. Nobody closed him down on the shot, and you know, they've actually started the game really well. They've well, they've done it by playing those early long balls, Chris. They've pushed Norwich's defence back, and Teddy's dropped back, so it's left a lot of space in the midfield areas. Where at the moment, you know, they've they've changed up a little bit, started to play all around a bit simpler through the midfield, and they're getting some space. Another test for the Norwich defence. Corner, left hand side, taken by Millwall, aimed towards the penalty spot, headed down by Leonard, and cleared by Onel Hernandez. And it goes out for a throw into Millwall on their right, halfway inside the Norwich half. Well, he had a free header, Chris, and actually, you know, a little bit more clever, he could have brought that down and, and had a strike at goal, no-one closed him down again, so... Again, I think we've seen probably Mill will get into this 18-yard box in Norwich more than lots of teams have done in, in previous weeks. Well, Leonard scored for Millwall against Ipswich a couple of weeks ago, as the ball is hit long by Millwall towards the penalty area. Uh, Elliot brings it down, gets his way past Jamal Lewis, there's an opportunity here, perhaps, but uh, Norwich have scrambled it away through Lewis. Up towards the halfway line, it's a loose header from Millwall, and Puki has gathered it and races through as Norwich City turned defence into attack here. Making the most of a Millwall slip, Puki, edge of the penalty area, can't quite force his way through. And Millwall get man back and they do clear, but now Norwich urged on by the crowd. Come forward with Tetty, out to the right it goes and Max Ahrens crosses first time, it's charged down. And Ferguson, the former Newcastle player, will bring it away, or should have brought it away, but Max Ahrens has dispossessed it. And Norwich will not let up here. Puki, lovely flick on the edge of the area to Stiefelman, who tries to give it back to Puki. Does find it. Puki tries to bring the ball back from the byline, but can't quite. Buendia goes for it. Millwall have cleared, but only as far as the Norwich right wing. Tetic looking for Leitner. That's a loose pass from Tetic. Gives it away to Millwall, and now they will surge forward on the counter-attack. The open nature of this game continues. Here's Jed Wallace, left wing. Plays the ball back to Williams in the midfield. Stiefelman goes to meet him, but Millwall have possession. They now enter Norwich territory. Big Tom Elliott is unmarked here on the right-hand side, but they ignore him for now. Eventually, it is slipped to Elliott on this right wing. Back to the halfway line now it goes. And lifted by Leonard up towards Gregory in the penalty area. Gregory's won the knockdown, but Tetty's there to sweep it away for Norwich City. Leonard again for Millwall. Finds Elliott towards the right-hand side. Wallace... Uh, his pass is intercepted, Norwich have it back, lovely touch from Stiefman onto Buendia who sails over the halfway line and now Norwich counter and they've got Puki through the middle, oh but he, Buendia couldn't quite find him, Hernandez to the left was in space and might have been a better option but uh, plenty of attacking intent and endeavour from both sides, it's nil-nil after 16 minutes but it's a good watch this game. Yes, I think just pass selection from Norwich so far Chris, they've gotten some good areas in one-on-ones and two-on-twos and I thought he just waited a little bit longer for a little bit more support and, and that time you said then you know, Steve Williams could have played the ball out or Puki could have pulled the, play, uh, pulled the ball out to, to Buendia. Just a little bit calmer, a little bit more quality and uh, they could have found themselves in some good positions. Steve to the right-hand side, rolls the ball towards the edge of the penalty area. Whoa, quite run for Max Aarons. He almost got in the way of Hernandez there and it's left it to each other and Millwall again bring it away with a bit of confidence. Uh, Millwall not the sort of team that are going to just sit back and invite Norwich onto them, they like to impose themselves physically into a game and they've given Norwich plenty to think about, the ball's gone back to Amos, the goalkeeper, who clears long Zimmerman underneath it, heads it down well, smart pass from Tetty on to Leitner, now Stiefelman immediately turns and this time does play it to the left-hand side and Hernandez, the Norwich crowd, the Carrow Road Choir in good voice at the moment, nil-nil the score Leitner coming forward for Norwich City, Lewis available to the left-hand side Leitner, though, instead will give it to Tetty, who's 35 yards out. The ball is on to Max Ahrens on the right wing. Here is the City youngster. Finds Puki in the penalty area. Puki bursts into life, but doesn't quite control the ball, but makes up for it by really making it difficult for the left-back Murray Wallace to clear. Eventually, goal kick is given. Puki doesn't like it. He thinks it should be a corner. But uh, both sides here, what is really noticeable, both sides here are working so hard in this game, Darren Eady. Yeah, I think it's... Uh... A good tempo, you actually just saw the, the Millwall centre-back just look to its goalkeeper Amos and just almost pat his hands down and say calm down, slow things down a little bit, I think he wants to disrupt the tempo in Norwich, not let them get into a rhythm, um, it's clearly a tactic they're employing this afternoon. Southampton lead against Watford in the Premier League, Gabbiadini the goal scorer, so Southampton, Newcastle and Huddersfield all winning, and earlier on Cardiff beat Brighton 2-1, so at the moment it could be a decent afternoon for a lot of the teams who are struggling in the Premier League, but we're focusing on the battle to get there, the championship. Norwich could go top of the table if they win this one today. They're drawing nil-nil with Millwall at the moment. We're 18 minutes into it on BBC Radio Norfolk, and it's been a fascinating watch so far. Millwall uh, 
playing the way they play and causing Norwich some problems. And Elliott has just headed the ball on towards the edge of the penalty area. It's a poor pass, and that's going to allow Norwich City to get some players back. But uh, Elliott, having won the flick, was absolutely nailed by Zimmerman. Referee has allowed play to continue because Millwall are in a great position. Jed Wallace crossing from the right, cut out. Leitner then wins a free kick for the challenge by Jed Wallace, and Norwich get away with one there. But <laughs> Elliott there it beat. Zimmerman in the air, and in fact, he beat him so comprehensively. Zimmerman was so late, he actually ended up headbutting the back of Tom Elliott, didn't he? Yeah, you can see the referee now just having a little word with Zimmerman, not just in terms of his timing of the header, just making sure he's okay because he does look a little bit groggy. I think he's, you know, we don't want to pretend once I'm not hurt, I'm fine. Um, took a little bit of wind out of him, sure, and then Elliott as well. He's they're both laying on the floor for a, for a short period, but both back up now and, and look fine. If you're closer from Zimmerman and you're standing in the tunnel before the game, He's looking along the line of Millwall players, yeah, you're thinking, word. right, I'm going to have a headache tonight. There's, yeah. It's going to happen at some point, isn't it, what's just happened to Zimmerman? You, you just know it. Yeah, and you, you can see look, their intent in terms of the, their full-backs as well, pushing forward and looking for Elliot in those, in those wide areas in the corners of the 18-yard box and trying to get the knockdown to Wallace. Uh, it's QPR nil, Brentford 1. Steve McLaren, the manager of the month, that curse may be striking today. Neil Morpay has scored it, Championship's top goal scorer this season. He missed that sitter here at Carrow Road just a couple of weeks ago. Norwich nil, Millwall nil. Been real blood and thunder stuff here so far. Closer, brings the ball over the halfway line. Nice pass as well towards the right wing and Max Ahrens, who, as we saw last week at Hillsborough, doesn't mind getting forward when he gets the opportunity. And he's played back in again by Leitner here, well forward. Back again to Moritz Leitner, who's... Uh, Working out the best option, goes to the right-hand side. Now it's Hernandez who's gone over to the right wing for Norwich City to get involved in this one. Hernandez taking on the defender, doing well, getting the cross in, and he falls for Jamal Lewis in the penalty area, but the whistle has gone. The referee spotted a push by yeah. Stephen in the box. Free I kick. think it's a push by Jamal Lewis, actually. He's at the far post and has been whipped across. He gives, I'm not quite sure who it is, he gives one of the middle defenders or yeah, a, a good shove in the back to make sure he's in position to, to collect it. And, uh, you know, you always want to give him a little bit of a shove, but there's sometimes there's a... You do it a little bit too much in front of the referee, he's, gonna, he's obviously going to blow up for a free kick. If Jamal Lewis is prepared to shove one of these Millwall defenders, he's a, <laughs> a braver man than, than I am, Darren Eady. You wouldn't have ever done that, would you? No. A long ball from Millwall, high, very high, towards the Norwich penalty area. Zimmerman does well, just to hold off Gregory there. And the ball goes to Lewis. 20 minutes gone, nil-nil. Jamal Lewis hits one long and drops it onto this left wing. And Steekman is there, and that means that Jake Cooper has to come across and head it out of play for a Norwich throw-in. Cooper once scored twice in the same game at Carrow Road for Reading a few years ago when Neil Adams was the Norwich manager, just when it was starting to go a bit wrong, and Reading won that one 2 1 when Norwich had been in front. But, uh, he's moved on to Millwall now, and well, you only have to look at him to know what a threat he's going to be from set pieces today. Not the only one in this Millwall team. They're pretty organised, Chris, aren't they? Setting their two banks of four and it's up to Norwich to have that quality to be able to break them down. Well, Teddy's making good use of the space, brings it well forward, feeds Aaron's on the right-hand side, level with the penalty area, plenty of Millwall players back. Aaron's, though, has found Buendia on the edge of the box, to Teddy in the area, Teddy just trying to shift it back towards Buendia, it was intercepted, and uh, Millwall have got a free kick there, rather softly. Buendia going shoulder-to-shoulder shoulder with Ferguson, who just went down and buys the free kick in the left-back position. Oh, classic one, so frustrating for a manager as well, you've got Buendia, who's, what, five foot nothing, and... You know, just leans against him, the defender goes down, but it's one of those ones, you know, you don't foul in there, he's going away from goal, ball at his feet, the only place he can go is out for a corner for a throw-in, so just don't lean him against him and, and let him off the hook like he has done. But it's interesting, because at the minute Norwich are having to... I think the one way they can improve is just moving that ball a little bit quicker, Chris. You know, they're switching from side to side, but it's taking two or three passes to get across when actually we heard a little ripple of applause for, for Closer a little while ago when he went out there nice and quick into those wide areas. At the moment, I think it's just a little bit slow. Uh, Birmingham lead 1-0 against Hull in the Championship. Birmingham going really well now under Gary Monk. Here it's 0-0 on BBC Radio Norfolk. Not had too many clear-cut chances in this game. Put up there from Stephen in the midfield. It was one of those where you know, Williams actually sort of stooped it to, to, to get the header, so it, it looked worse than it actually was, but he, the boot did make contact with head. Yeah, and he came from behind him as well, so you didn't see him coming in and, and dipping his head, but the referee's always going to give a free kick, and I think we know exactly where this is going to go, anything inside. You know, Norwich's half or just inside their own half, indeed. They're probably just going to put the ball and clip it into the far post. Well, Millwall haven't won away from home since April. 
and they've got a free kick here just inside the Norwich half. Williams hits it diagonally towards the edge of that Norwich penalty. There's a free header across from Cooper here. Elliot heads it down, and that is 1-0 to Millwall, and it is so simple, and it was exactly what Daniel Farker warned his team about before this game. One long free kick into the penalty area. The big defender Cooper heads it across, and then Elliot heads it down and into the net, and midway through the first half here, it's Norwich 0, Millwall 1. Yeah, it looks really simple, Chris, but actually it was, it was, it was quite clever the way they played this, you know, they, they didn't knock that ball from, a, from an angle straight into the corner of the 18-yard box, and I'm not quite sure who it was, one of the Millwall players actually pushed Jamal Lewis just slightly to give him, Cooper, the man behind him, the space to head it as a free header, right back across goal, but, I mean, you know, Elliot's on his own, there's two men marking him in the middle of the box, you know, know what kind of threat he is, you've just got to get a bit closer to him, don't let him get a run on you, and uh, unfortunately that's what he did. Well, it's only Tom Elliott's second goal of the season, but, but Jake Cooper, who headed that ball across, has now got six assists in the championship this season. There's no one in the division that's well, got more assists than Cooper. We so. said it before the game, didn't we, Chris? And he, but as I say, it wasn't just a... I mean, it was a, a simple ball into the box, but as I say, it was a really clever play. I think it might have been by Wallace, who, who just gave Jamal Lewis, just lent on him so he couldn't back out and, and put any Cooper under any pressure on the header. Cooper has a free header across the box, and... You know, as much as they should have stopped that one, um, we know what Elliot's going to do. He's going to look for the ball straight back across the, uh, the six-yard box, which he did, and no one picked him up. And Norwich have some thinking to do now. 1-0 down against the Millwall side, who have acquitted themselves really well to the task here. They haven't won at Carrow Road, Millwall, since 1968. They did lead here back in January on New Year's Day, but ended up losing 2-1. Here's Hernandez, who was offside when he got that ball. Yeah, no doubt about that. Flag goes up. It was offside. And... Uh, well, you can hear the Norwich fans doing their best to just lift the noise levels and, and stay with their team. And, and you're right, Mill will do what they do very well, but I think Daniel Farker will still be frustrated because he spent a good deal of his time before this game yeah. <laughs> talking about what the big threat would be and the, the fact that he knew and yet it still happened. That, that must be so frustrating for a manager. Yeah, it is, but sometimes you just have to applaud the other team with the quality they've got and how well they do it. It's, say it, it looks simple, but there was a little bit more to it than that. And you know, I think you look back to Norwich at the start of the season when they were conceding goals, Chris, they were more often than not big lumped balls into, into areas where Hanley didn't deal with them or Close didn't deal with them. And, you know, that is a way to break Norwich down. It is a bit of a weakness about Norwich City. And uh, now they're trying to get uh, Jed Wallace in on the left-hand side. It's gone behind for a goal kick. I mean, it is only six goals in 11 games now that Krull has conceded, so including today. So we, we shouldn't be too hard on, on Norwich defensively, but it just goes to show how there is just no let-up in the championship as well as Norwich have done recently as well as they've done to get towards the top of the division every week you get asked a different question in this division don't you yeah there's a powerful header by Elliot as well because there's no pace on the ball the ball's come in with pace on it from the free kick but then Cooper's headed it back across with and loses a bit of pace on that so he's had to generate his own pace and, and Cruel can't keep it out at the other end Puki with a nice header into the path of Hernandez who returns the favour Puki edge of the penalty area for Norwich City tries a shot but he's got three Millwall players around him when he takes it on and it's blocked and he slaps the turf in frustration I think he took a bit of a knock there Puki and Millwall will play with great commitment and they've got a lead to protect now and they've gone long and again and they've found Gregory who's causing problems for two Norwich defenders here Aarons has come round there and swept up and dispossessed him and got the ball back for Norwich City who trail 1-0 at Carrow Road Aarons good play onto Lightner you can hear the Norwich fans staying with their team urging them off urging them to find a way back into this game they've come from behind already in this little spell of the season to win games. Closer, aims the ball out to the right wing and picks out Aarons, who's now is involved at the other end of the pitch. Buendia, though, can't quite give it back to him, and Millwall have won it back deep inside their own half. Tom Elliott with the goal. But Millwall give it away. Here's Stiefelman, 25 yards out. Stiefelman to Hernandez, edge of the penalty area. Hernandez runs straight into a defender. Hutchison and Millwall will clear it. You're right with the point you made earlier, Darren. It is so congested in that Millwall penalty area that even when Norwich get there, there's barely any space for anyone to get a shot away. Well, there is, Chris, but, you know, Stiefman's picked up the ball there. He's only five or six yards outside the 18-yard box, and he rolls it to Hernandez, who then tries to dribble it into the 18-yard box. I'd like to see someone just have a dig. 1-0 to Millwall. Another big question being asked here of Norwich City and their credentials at the top of this division. Leitner has possession on halfway for the Canaries. Brings it forward. And Millwall now have everybody, bar Lee Gregory, back behind the ball. We were praising them at the start of this game for their attitude towards it, the way they weren't sitting back, the way they were prepared to ask questions of Norwich, and it's paid off for them. They lead 1-0. Here's Buendia. Gives it to Tetti. Aaron's available on the right-hand side in a bit of space. Well forward. Max Aaron's takes on Murray Wallace, the fullback, gets past him, but Williams, the midfielder, is covering behind and puts the ball out for a throw-in. 
Such a good option for Norwich, isn't he, Max Ahrens? Massive. He's been, he's been an absolute revelation since he's come to the side, Chris, defensively and, you know, as we saw just a moment ago, and, and getting forward as well. He's, he's almost a perfect... Oh, Lightner with a great pass to the right channel, and Puki who cuts it back for Steep, and it's Tetsu who hits the shot, and it's not far wide. Quicker from Norwich there. Yeah, and if the one person you probably want, wouldn't want it to fall to, I thought Norwich side is, is Tetsu. I know he's scored a couple of goals through his career, but probably somebody else would have been... A bit close to the target, good bit of play though, but getting the shots off a bit quicker, Chris, moving the ball quickly, creating that area, then getting a shot away. At the moment, it seems to me Norwich is trying to score that perfect goal, um, trying to dribble it into the box, creating those little chances when you know, they have got ability in the side to score from distance. Well, that was Leitner there, just using the ball much more quickly, wasn't it? Finding Puki and the cutback. Maybe Steepman could have taken it on rather than, than dummying it, but he didn't. And Tetty did, and not far wide, as he looks for his second of the season. So some hope for Norwich, but they are a goal down, and here's Gregory. Surging forward on the right wing for Millwall. Good tackle from Tetty. Throw in. Could be a long one, this. Norwich will have to keep their wits about them. They've conceded a goal from a, a set piece already. 29 minutes in. Darren Eady watching this one with us. Norwich, remember, only one defeat in 11 league games before this one. This one is thrown short to Jed Wallace on the right, who crosses it in. Stiefelman just about gets there twice in the penalty area. It was a heavy touch to begin with. But he's got there the second time and now. Lightner was able to get a throw in by playing it off the sliding. Connor McLaughlin, the right back. And so Norwich have a throw halfway inside their own half. They haven't really created much, have they, Norwich? Just that Tetty no, effort a moment ago. Plenty of possession and good areas and even getting into the 18-yard box, Chris, but there's, there's always seems to be a little bit too much of an emphasis on trying to score that perfect goal, a little bit of, you know, quality tricks or something in the box, when actually they're getting good areas to just get a shot away a little bit quicker. Norwich go long this time. Slightly loose header there from Murray Wallace, back to Cooper. Buendia was sniffing around, but the ball has gone back to the goalkeeper, Amos. And with the right foot, he will clear over the halfway line now. <laughs> Elliot throwing himself at it, going down, asking for a free kick, never a free kick in that one. And the referee's going to stop playing because Elliot has, has crumpled to the floor after... Yeah. Jumping with Teddy, but Teddy didn't do anything. So I, I think he even landed. Yeah, kick. I think he landed awkwardly, either on his ankle or, or on his shoulder. He seemed to go down fairly heavy. He didn't land on his feet. It appeared as if he sort of landed on his shoulder. So whether he's winded himself. Well, it was uh, Elliot who scored the goal here after 24 minutes to put Millwall in front. And uh, plenty already for Norwich City to think about coming up at half time. We'll round up all the latest scores for you. And now Kings then are getting on in their game against the Dives at the Walks. All the latest from the Premier League and, and the Championship too. And uh, don't forget, it may be an international week, but still got plenty of sport for you on BBC Radio Norfolk this week. Our new Tuesday night show, The Game, is back on Tuesday evening. Cedric Onsalan, the former Canary, among the guests are on that this week with Phil Daly. The scrimmage will be along at 6 o'clock on Thursday. Looking back at what is the 60th anniversary of the start of Norwich's 1959 FA Cup run. A special programme on Thursday. And we'll have some more live football for you next Saturday, even without Norwich City. Um, Tom Elliott's OK. It, it, it looks like it's going to take quite a lot to knock him down in this game today. He scored the only goal of it, and the referee is going to restart play with a drop ball, because it, it certainly wasn't a foul. Halfway inside the Norwich half, which will, I would hope, be knocked back to Tim Krull. Otherwise, we are going to have a bit of a stink, aren't we, Darren? But this has got to be played back to the yeah, Norwich should keeper, be, the, the ref should be saying, play it back, but well, Norwich play on. Well, Norwich haven't, but they have got the ball, which is where they had it, just inside their own half. Elliot comes back on. Millwall leading 1-0. We've played just over half an hour on BBC Radio Norfolk at, at Carrow Road. Relatively mild afternoon. Norwich fans uh, staying with their team, despite the fact they find themselves a goal down. That's a lovely ball from Buendia into the channel. Aarons gets the cross in, but it's too close to the goalkeeper. Bit of hope for Norwich. Well, certainly, Chris, and I think this, this new... You look Norwich team we've seen over the last past couple of months is that you know they, they can come from behind. You know, it doesn't matter if they can see goals, they still have a belief that they can still score goals and they've done it against arguably better teams than Millwall, so you know, there's still a long way to go. Well, already in this spell of games as the ball is headed on by Elliot, foul and towards Gregory, who chased it into the penalty area, but <laughs> Elliot has nailed uh, Zimmerman there for the second time this afternoon, and it's a free kick for Norwich City back inside their own half. Yeah, Norwich already, remember, 1-0 down against Forest and against Villa in this little run of matches since the last international break, and they won both of those. So they shouldn't be too concerned, but the referee's just being a little bit fussy about exactly where the free kick's got to be taken from for Norwich City, and Zimmerman's absolutely fine to carry on. And he plays the ball back to his goalkeeper, Tim Krul, and on we go again, Norwich goal down. He's closer. Gets the ball back again to the Dutch goalkeeper, Tim Krul. 
And now it goes out to the right-hand side. Lightner's gone out there to find a bit of space, but he's got the ball. Can he use it well? Pukki's making a run towards the penalty area, but Ferguson intercepts. The ball's gone out of play. Norwich throw in, taken already to Lightner. Wants to start something else for Norwich here. He's gone wide right and Aaron. Stieperman, right corner of the penalty area, onto Hernandez. He cuts it across here. But cut out of the near post by Hutchison and behind for a Norwich corner. He's got to dig that one to the far post, Chris. You know, he's got three or four Millwall players rushing in the, towards the goal, back towards their own men and, and, and to Hernandez. He's not going to find a way through them. He's just digging that up into the far post and there's two or three Norwich players coming in the back post to have possibly been a free header. Corner to Norwich City. 11 minutes to go until half-time. They're 1-0 down. Lightner to take. Played in from the right-hand side. Good corner. Closest header. Tipped over the crossbar. Decent save from Amos, but Tim Closer will be really disappointed that he didn't score that. Uh, unusual for Mill, isn't it? A set piece and no challenge on him. And Closer's found himself almost on the... Well, basically on the penalty spot. Free header. Heads it straight down the middle of the goal. Straight to the goalkeeper to palm it over. Anywhere else it's in the back of the net. Another corner for Norwich City. Leitner again from the right-hand side, delivers again, promising. Goalkeeper, though, has got a good fist on that one. Outside the penalty area it goes. And it's dropped in the end on the halfway line for Max Ahrens. Millwall looking to push out here and make it difficult for Norwich to put another quick attack together, and it's, they've succeeded because Norwich have gone all the way back to their goalkeeper. I'm telling you, at Twickenham, England are 15-0 up against the All Blacks. Uh, we will have the latest uh, on that one at half-time here on BBC Radio Norfolk. I think a few of these lads could play in that today. <laughs> a few of the Millwall lads, certainly, yeah. <laughs> Here's uh, Buendia by the corner flag on the right-hand side for Norwich City. Looks for Stieperman, who's found some room on the right corner of the penalty area. He does lift this one towards the far post, but it's not a good cross. And it's behind for a goal kick. And you're right, I think, Darren, about just that, the options, that the decisions that Norwich are taking in that final third at the moment are often not, not the right ones. Yeah, they're getting good areas, as Norwich always do. They have plenty of possession and, and, and get into the final third really, really well. But either the cross to the far post isn't right or... You know, they're making that wrong decision and trying to play the ball in a little bit too early and not waiting for that support. It's just, yeah, just that very clinical decision-making in that final third that Norwich have been left a little bit wanting so far. Bristol City nil, Preston won. Alex Neal's Preston in front of Ashton Gate. Ten minutes to go to half-time here. Norwich nil, Millwall won. Tim Closer will be so disappointed that he didn't score that goal. That chance a moment ago. He's got three goals already this season. Those sort of positions are, are his forte, but his... Gregory on the left-hand side for Millwall, taking on Zimmerman, who's staying with him. Down goes the Millwall Super player, foul. yeah, it's a free kick. It's a free kick, and it puts Norwich under real pressure here. A free kick level with the penalty area towards the left-hand side. It's one of those where Zimmerman doesn't need to make the challenge. No, absolutely, Chris. And I'm, I'm, as the ball's played into that corner and I see him running, I knew exactly what he was going to do. And you're being a, a left-winger myself, holding that ball in that area. You feel the defender lean against you. You've got your back up back to goal. You know, you're facing the crowd, you're almost going back towards your own goal, and you feel a defender lean, or you feel that defender just lean against you, you just fall over. And it is as simple as that, and you, and you get yourself a free kick. So Zimmerman's got to be a little bit more clever than that, because this isn't the kind of areas you want to be giving away set pieces to, to Millwall. No, they've already scored from one. They lead 1-0. Well, this one is better than a corner, really. It's level probably with the edge of the six-yard box on that left-hand side. It's going to be played in by Ferguson, delivered with pace. Stephen gets there, and Norwich City, I think, have just about scrambled it out away. And they've done better than that, actually. They've got it to Buendia. Oh, Buendia is clattered there, absolutely clattered by Murray Wallace, who's shown the first yellow card of the game. He, he took one for the team there. He prevented the quick Norwich counter-attack. But Stephen, who headed that uh, free kick away, and it, it fell kindly to a Norwich player, and they nearly broke up the field quickly. Yeah, there. always a yellow, and I'd expect my, my defenders, my you know, to, to hit Brendia there. I know it sounds a bit crass, but you want him to bring him down if you're going to do a foul, it's in that area. I'm, I'm not quite sure I like Brendia putting his hand in the air to make sure he gets booked, though. <laughs> Waving a fake card at the ref. I don't really like to see that. No, I think it was always going to be a yellow card anyway. Middlesbrough at one up against Wigan. Uh, FA Cup first round day as well. It's Bromley 1, Peter Brunil. Here's Brendia for Norwich City. Oh, he got in that number 10 position. But couldn't quite find the ball through to a teammate in the penalty area. Millwall break now with Jed Wallace, who's knocked it round Leitner. But uh, Aaron's is there to race back and intercept and find Zimmerman, who skillfully clips it back to Aaron's. Norwich maybe 1 0 down, but there's no panic about the way they're playing. The defender's playing the ball around nicely there. I think Buendia's taken another couple of kicks there, but that doesn't put him off. He sails forward and hits a great pass. What a ball from Buendia into the path of Stieperman. Right wing, level with the penalty area. Marco Stieperman for Norwich City to Leitner, 20 yards from goal. Leitner closed down. Plays the ball eventually to the right-hand side of Max Ahrens, who finds Hernandez. 
to the right edge of the penalty area. Onel Hernandez here, can he work some room? It comes back to Max Ahrens, who does cross it in, but it's uh, cleared away by Millwall. Tetti battles, wins it for Norwich City, deep inside the Millwall half. Buendia has his heels clipped, clear free kick, Norwich free kick, deep inside the Millwall half now. Yeah, always a free kick again, a good area for a right-footed whip one to that far post. But again, Norwich getting into good areas inside the 18-yard box and just not quite making those right decisions. But you know, I'd like to see him just get the ball in the box a little bit earlier from wide areas. They're getting into those areas and then trying to force the ball in through the 18-yard box to score. Just put the ball in a little bit early because at the moment you congest it's all that congested area. We will defend in two banks of four with inside the width of the 18-yard box. It's going to take a sublime pass to, to break them down. It's almost like they don't quite believe they can they can beat them in the air, isn't it? Yeah. Like, but we, we only saw with that, that Manchester United win against Juventus the other day. You, you put the ball in the penalty area and you, you never quite know what's going to happen with that late own goal that won it for, for Manchester United. 1-0 here to Millwall. Lightness free kick curled into the penalty area. Closest back header! He's in the bar! The flag is up! The flag is up for offside! Zimmerman volleys in the rebound, takes it brilliantly, but the flag was already up for offside. Great but, finish. But so sorry for Zimmerman there because he finished it superbly. <laughs> Pretty. Brilliant finish, I thought this was going to go Rose to see it dropping to Zimmerman, but he's pinged one right in the top corner with a volley, but yeah, unfortunately for Norwich it was an offside position. But just interesting enough, Chris, you know, where that free kick's been taken from, you know, they, they do swing the ball into the box from good areas and wide areas from free kicks, so you think, well, why in open play do they not do the same? Why does it have to be set to try and create those opportunities? You know, putting crosses into the box that causes a lot of... A lot of difficulty, not only for the centre forward to get on the end of it, but also those defenders as well, makes them think. Well, that's Tim Closer, who's come close twice now. The first one, the free header that he had saved. That one, he hit the bar. Probably it was he who was flagged offside, though, so it wouldn't have counted. Uh, Millwall now try to break. Uh, throw in, they've won. Level with the Norwich penalty area. 2-0 uh, now to Newcastle against Bournemouth in the Premier League, both from Solomon Rondon. Bournemouth have been going so well recently, but Newcastle looking for their second win of the season, five minutes to half-time, Norwich nil, Millwall one. Norwich, though, have started to show signs that they can cause problems for Millwall, ironically, from set-pieces. <laughs> this game has been all about set-plays, hasn't it, so far? And now we've got a Millwall throw-in over on the far side there, left. Looks like it might be a, a long one from Ryan Leonard. And again, you can break this game up into what happens from balls hurled into the penalty area, and Steepman has... I think shown why he's in the team today, because two or three of those he's cleared away, and he does again there. Hutchison puts an up and under towards the Norwich penalty area, pushing it back by Elliot and Zimmerman, free kick to Norwich City. But we mentioned before the game, Stiefman in for Brancic to win those balls, and he's done that two or three times already, hasn't he? Yeah, he's shown his, his uh, worth in terms of his height. Also going forward as well, I think he's played well so far, Zim uh, Stiefman. You know, the Norwich team have played well, they've, they've got into really good areas, Chris, but... As I say, when they get in those wide areas, I'd like to see them just put the ball into the box a little bit quicker rather than waiting for the support, waiting for people to join and, you know, just swing a few in. It doesn't matter how big their defence is, anything whips across them in front of them when they're running back towards their own goal causes lots of problems. 1-0 to Millwall, four minutes to half-time on BBC Radio Norfolk. Here's Christoph Zimmerman on halfway. Out to Leitner on that right-hand side. Leitner finds Tim Closer. Closer's got some space to work with here. Forward he comes, confidently. Oh, and he's passed the ball straight against Buendia. And Millwall will break here. He got uh, a fortunate ricochet there. And it's Jed Wallace who runs diagonally towards the left-hand side. Closer trying to stay with him. And Max Ahrens, they've done enough. Norwich win it back, but uh, Ahrens, uh, all he can do is in the end, knock the ball out for a throw-in to Millwall. Halfway inside the Norwich half on the far side there left as they attack the Barkley end. And they're going to take a bit of time over this one. Darren Eady was right about... Now they're 1-0 up, just breaking the, the sort of Norwich momentum suits them, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it's just good game management, you know. They know what they're good at, they've got their noses in front, they know they're going to be under pressure with Norwich having lots of possession, so when they do get it, they've got to try and delay it as much as they can before Norwich get it back. Ball played towards the Norwich penalty area, easily dealt with by Christoph Zimmerman, who finished superbly a moment ago, but the flag had already gone up for offside. This one, he's played through the middle to Puki, who controls well. Releases the pass now to Jamal Lewis, who comes forward. Lewis plays a lovely ball in behind the normal defence for Hernandez. That's a great tackle from Hutchinson. Sliding in, had to get the ball, did get the ball. Behind it goes for a corner. The fans are feeling for a penalty, but that was really good defending from uh, Sean Hutchinson at the back there. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he got such a big appeal, actually. It was, a, it was just a brilliant tackle by the, uh, the middle right back. Hernandez hopes to get there first, but it doesn't, he slides in and brilliant tackle. Here we go then, 
It's like a hockey match, isn't it? We're waiting for the short corners, the, the set pieces. And it's another one for Norwich. Corner taken by Buendia into the penalty area. It goes a long way through. Teti controls in the penalty area with his back to goal. Eventually has it on the edge of the box. Doesn't really know where to go with it. Uses Puki for a short pass. Puki now finds Hernandez. Back heel from Hernandez. It's fallen nearly for Puki. Back to Hernandez. A real scramble on the edge of the box. Eventually Leitner works the pass to the right. Uh, Jamal Lewis pops up. Brings it into the penalty area. He's played it across the box. Still Norwich can't get the shot in. Stiefman back now to Buendia, who will shoot from the edge of the box. Oh, and it curls not far wide. That's what I'm talking about, though, Chris. Have a shot from outside the box. The defensive of Mill uh, so narrow inside the 18-yard box. It's very, very difficult. I mean, Hernandez has picked the ball up on the edge of the 18-yard box and tries to dribble in with eight Millwall players all stood in there. You know, that's the time he's just got to try and pick a pass or just clip the ball in from across and, and cause a few problems. Norwich are one down, but for the first time, Millwall are creaking now, aren't they? Yeah, they have. Norwich have played really, really well the last ten minutes. Well, actually, particularly since they've gone down and behind in this game, they've had lots of good possession, good opportunities on goal as well, but uh, not quite had the luck as they have been in recent weeks at the moment. Middlesbrough are 2-0 up against Wigan. Two for Jordan Hugo. Middlesbrough, one of the teams competing with Norwich at the moment at the top of the division. And they're 2-0 up. They look to be on their way to a win today. Norwich 1-0 down at home. They've turned this sort of situation around before this season as uh, Lewis is caught out in the left-back position here by Lee Gregory, who finds Wallace, who comes in from the right-hand side for Millwall, plays a terrible ball into the box. Really lets Norwich off the hook there. It seems for Tim Crawl to come and get. I, I don't even know what he was trying to do there. <laughs> you see Neil Harrison look across the other side as well. He's, he's not happy. You've got a couple of minutes left, a minute or so left, and the centre-forward gives the ball away cheaply to the goalkeeper. And now Norwich could make them feel even worse about that because they've got Stiefman in on the right wing. Level with the penalty area. Stiefman doing well. Oh, loose pass though, looking for Leitner. Teti does well to make something of it. Does really well. Releases Aarons on the right. Early cross from Aarons. And it's cut out at the near post by the goalkeeper. Kuki could not quite get there. Now that's better though. Fire that ball in across the six yard box. Max Aarons didn't quite get it right. And the, the keeper, he's dives down to pick it up easy enough, good run by Puki, but you know, you whip those balls across, Chris, and you've got the Millwall back four running in towards their goalkeeper, you've got Puki running in, you've got, um, you've got Hernandez running in, anything can happen. Norwich 1-0 down, we've got two minutes of first half stoppage time to be played. Norwich uh, have uh, looked more dangerous as the half has gone on, and they've scored many more goals in the second half than the first this season. Hernandez doing really well, determined to get past McLaughlin, even though he's on the ground for a moment. Here's Jamal Lewis on the left wing, taking up the attack for Norwich City. We haven't seen too much of Lewis going forward today. He finds Leitner. Uh, on to Lewis, who's got a crossing opportunity from the left, and it comes! Oh, and the goalkeeper clawed at it. Did he get a touch? No, according to the officials. Goal kick given. Wasn't a great cross, that, from Lewis. No, it wasn't, but, yeah, you're right what you said. You know, we normally see Lewis bombing down this left-hand side, but that's, that's quality play by, by Mill, and it comes a lot from... Them starting essentially with a with two centre forwards, you know, it doesn't give the freedom as much to Max Aaron's and, and Lewis to get forward because they've got to be there to support closer and Zimmerman in, in defence. So, so far, you'd say the reason they haven't been able to get forward is quite as much as is the good player Millwall, and they're quite direct. You know, Millwall, if you leave any gaps in behind, they will find them. Well, we can't say we're surprised about any of what we're seeing today. I think there was a, a Norwich fan put up on, on social media last Saturday the championship table as it would be if games finished at half time, and, and Norwich were well in the bottom half. Whereas, of course, in real life, they are near the top. You imagine that the season Lambert was in charge. <laughs> How many goals he scored late on yeah, in the and, and that's it. And, and it, it, Norwich have been better in the second half of games, but we've got to make sure they don't go in any worse than 1-0 down because they've just committed another foul here inside their own half. There's a Millwall player down, it's Ryan Leonard. Uh, the referee saying that the physio doesn't need to come on at the moment after a knock to the head. But it is a free kick to Millwall, and this is the sort of position from where their goal was created. A free kick just inside the Norwich half that they hit diagonally across the box. Jake Cooper knocked it into the danger zone, and Tom Elliott scored. And they will look to repeat the dose here in first half stoppage time. Well, you can see it, Chris, already, can't you? Cooper's over on the left hand side away from us. The free kick's on the opposite side of the pitch, and Elliott's on this side now towards us. So you can see exactly the same thing he's going to be aimed for, isn't it? Clip it to that far end, head it back across. There's the delivery from Williams, and Cooper in the end goes down in the penalty area, appealing for a foul, but it, actually the delivery wasn't right this time, it was over his head and behind for a goal kick. So the mirror image of the goal, not coming off. And that, I would think, will just about do us for this first half. Norwich nil, Millwall 1 on BBC Radio Norfolk. And uh, it looks to me as if the moment Tim Krull kicks this, 
referee's going to blow for half time. That's exactly what happens, and, and that has been a fascinating first half, really. The game hasn't surprised us. Millwall have done exactly what we thought Millwall would do. Now, I'm just interested here in Daniel Farker on the pitch and going straight over to talk to the officials. Now, we don't see this very often. Daniel Farker's usually a fairly calm, reserved, not particularly animated figure on the side of the pitch, but he has marched from the touchline, gone into the centre circle, and is right in the face of the referee and the linesman here. Now he's gone off, he's waved a, a dismissive hand in their direction and walked off the field. I, I, I don't know particularly what Daniel Farker's got a, a problem with. No, I don't either, unless he's he's moaning about Millwall players going down quite late on in the match. I mean, it was, but that's game management, isn't it? You know, they've, they've done well, they've got themselves in front, they're slowing the game down. Um, almost buying fouls, whether Clark is disappointed with that. He thinks they're probably just playing the referee a little bit. Well, that's, that's part of the game, you know. Uh, get on with it. Millwall are back with us. They haven't made any changes either. And so we can get on with the second half. Uh, Norwich City 1 0 down. A win today puts them top of the table, at least until Leeds kick off at West Brom later on. Uh, but they've got to get the job done. They're a goal behind here, as they have been in several games recently. And they have come back to beat teams like Forest and Aston Villa they need to do it to Millwall I'll tell you who's playing if you haven't heard so far I'll remind you later on the game is back underway darkness beginning to descend the four shadows of each player visible under the floodlights now as they take effect and it's Norwich in yellow and green who will attack the Barkley end in his second half as they like to do Buendia sweeps on along the right wing here for Max Aarons to cross into the penalty area Pukki's there at the near post he controls has to go away from goal to do so now angles it across and it's clear behind and it's a corner to Norwich City that's just a sort of start to the second half that Daniel Tarko would have been demanding because they're a goal down yeah really good by Max Aarons again he's been out a lot today hasn't he we'd normally relied on Lewis on the left hand side to get forward in recent times but certainly his acquisition to the side has opened up this right hand side and he's been nothing more than outstanding since he's been in the team corner to Norwich they cause problems from their own set pieces in the first half Leitner's corner it's not a good one looking for Steepman at the near post he's beaten to it and Millwall hack it into the stand Norwich have Krul in goal Aaron's Zimmerman closer and Lewis at the back Tetti and Leitner in midfield with Steepman in front of them Buendia and Hernandez wide Puki up front they're 1-0 down the goal after 24 minutes Tom Elliott the Millwall striker heading in after Jake Cooper, the centre-half, had headed a free kick on. Here's Buendia for Norwich, finding Tetti in space, halfway inside the Millwall half, ball goes left, that's where Tim Close is waiting for it. On to Puki, left corner of the box. Puki turns, can he make something happen here? It's gone back to Close, a lovely reverse pass to Jamal Lewis now, on the left corner of the box. Lewis goes outside the full-back McLaughlin, who challenges him, ball breaks behind, goal kick given. The two Northern Ireland internationals going shoulder to shoulder there, and... Um, Never anything in that, and it's gone behind for a goal kick. You see that though, Chris, but I don't think Jamal Lewis is one to go down unless he's, you know, there's some kind of contact. And I think if that's anywhere else on the pitch, the ref gives it a free kick. So for me, perhaps he's, he's either tripped over his own feet or he's got to give a free kick just outside the area. He's in a Raheem Sterling, you mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> interesting that one. Isn't it? <laughs> well, there weren't too many complaints from the players, no. and that's often um, quite telling. The Millwall team. Amos in goal, McLaughlin, Hutchison, Cooper and Murray Wallace at the back. They've got Williams and Leonard in the centre of midfield, Jed Wallace and Shane Ferguson playing wide, Elliot and Gregory up front. There's a midfield tussle developing at the moment. Uh, Jed Wallace fires one forward into the channel for Millwall, Gregory sets off after it, gets there, right-hand side, comes past Zimmerman. Uh, Zimmerman doing his best to hold him off and gets a free kick there, Zimmerman, out of that, when he seemed to be struggling against Gregory. The German centre-half recovering well there. Yeah, good defending as well for such a big man, he's, he's been turned left and right, manages to get his body across him and, and he tries to play the booth ball through him, essentially, in the end, Zimmerman just holds his ground and they say, when you, as you feel that contact, you go to ground to get the free kick. Free kick to Norwich City, in their own penalty area. <laughs> Tim Krull runs up to the ball, runs back again. And now runs up to the ball once more and clears it upfield. Norwich fans just starting to get a little bit edgy with their team of goal down. The ball goes to O'Neill Hernandez on the left-hand side, skillfully turns away here from Hutchison and sets Steepman racing away on the left-hand side from the byline, finds Pukki! <laughs> Across the 
six-yard box. Going beyond that post, he manages to open his body up still to power that into the top corner. Fantastic finish. Nine goals in 16 games now for the Royal City team of 50. That's the first he's scored at Carrow Road uh, since well, his last four have been away. Since they beat Middlesbrough here in September, the last one he got at Carrow Road. That one was so well taken, similar to the one Jordan Rhodes got against Aston Villa a few weeks ago. Tilly Kings then won them up in their game against St Ives as well. The two Norfolk sides scoring almost simultaneously there, but Pukki with a lovely finish for Norwich City, took it so well. And it's just a man in such form at the moment, nine for the season, that is. Here comes uh, Millwall with the man on loan from Sheffield United, Ryan Leonard, who angles it to the left-hand side and finds Ferguson, former Newcastle player, Ferguson. He's got Murray Wallace behind him, the fullback who cuts inside, plays the cross in, it's over closer and over Elliott from behind for the goal kick. That's just what Norwich needed early in the second half. Pukki... He took it so well, and well done Hernandez, and well done Stephenman in the build-up. Yeah, brilliant by Stephenman, as I said in the first half, but Hernandez and he's finally got into the role and the position on the field where he wants to be, and he's, he's, been, he's been brilliant. And enjoying his football, Marco Stephenman creating that goal for Timo Pukic to make it 1-1. And now, Manchester City rediscovering a bit of their swagger that got them towards the top of this division, but Millwall asked them enough questions in the first half to convinced them that they've just got to keep going in this one, Norwich, as Jamal Lewis is now bundled over, and Norwich get another free kick. How many free kicks have they won already in the opening nine minutes of this second half? Lewis goes down, free kick to Norwich over on the far side, their left. Lewis is taking a little while to get up here, actually. Had his sort of heels clipped from behind there, didn't he? Yeah, one of those ones to say when the defender's running behind you, what you do is you literally slow down, and the defender's got nowhere to go, he has to, he has to bump into the back of you almost and ends up just tripping you up and, and giving you the free kick. Over on the left, very tight to the touchline, it's taken. And now pushed into the path of Lewis, edge of the penalty area. Lewis is going to hit a shot that bounces, and the goalkeeper makes a, a smart stop. Relatively comfortable for Ben Amos, there wasn't a great deal of power on it, but it came through so many players, he probably saw that quite late, the former Manchester United keeper, who, who was given no chance for the Pookie goal. It was so swiftly dispatched, it sort of hit the back of the net and bounced back out again. And I think there are a few people that weren't quite sure whether he'd finished it, Pookie, but it was a good goal. Yeah, I think the keeper was still diving on its way out. <laughs> So clinically taken. 1-1. One, one. Tetti breaks up a Millwall attack on the edge of his own penalty area. Millwall, though, gather it. They're going from right to left as we look at it. Ryan Leonard hits a hopeful one forward. And it's gone behind for a goal kick to Norwich City. And if Norwich uh, get a point here, they will go top of the championship for now. Or they'll certainly go above Leeds for now. But Leeds play later against West Brom, so... Yeah, it's a long way to go in this league yet. But it, I know, but it still would be nice to yeah. go into the international break yeah. top of the table. Wouldn't oh, it? oh, definitely, you know, in terms of confidence as well for, for the lads going forward. But you know, it's, it's, a, it's such a tough league. But you just got to literally, and it's very, very difficult. But you kind of got to think week in, week out. You know, every game that comes along, doesn't matter who you play and how you get that result. Just get it done. Find a way. And which have done well in this part of the season. That's lovely from Kuki. Floating the ball to the right wing, picking out Max Ahrens, who's in space, and now he. Works it into the channel here for Hernandez, up to the byline on the right-hand side. He's tackled, might break for Max Ahrens, though. Buendia's in space, right corner of the penalty area. Buendia tries a trick, gets it onto his left foot, hits a curling shot, which is blocked. Perhaps could have passed that one a little bit quicker to Leitner there, Buendia. He was in a good position, and Millwall have now raced up to the halfway line with the ball. McLaughlin, the right fullback, looks for Elliott through the middle. Ooh, Elliott and Closer have collided there, Closer stayed down. Play will continue. Norwich have possession, Buendia bringing it forward, looking for Stiefman here in that number 10 position, on to Puki, Puki with the left foot, tries a shot, it's blocked, uh, Hernandez tries a shot, it's a ball, it is going to the defender making a diving save there in front of Hernandez as he hit the volley goalwards, and now Norwich City, who've had penalty problems in recent weeks, have another spot kick, and Timu Puki has grabbed the ball this he's time. He's picked the ball up and pointed at himself straight away, I think Lightning's gone over to him to ask him, and he's got no mate, you ain't having it, I'm taking it. That's a clear penalty, though, isn't it? I mean, I haven't seen it again, but that, that looks like a clear penalty. Yeah, it's it was a one, diving yeah. save. Uh, it's a difficult one. The defender's jumping in and he puts his arms up in the air and it, it hits his arms, but I don't think the shot has gone anywhere near the goal, but, you know, hits your arms in the, in the box like that. I mean, I'm not sure what else he could do with his arms, but the ref's always going to give it. Well, we heard from Daniel Farker before this game about penalties. He says Norwich have been practising them. They've only scored one out of four this season. And now Timo Puki is on penalty duties for the first time. In front of the Barclay end, Norwich City 
having been 1 0 down at half time, have a chance here to go 2 1 up 13 minutes into the second half. Carrow Road looks on nervously. Is this the moment for Timo Puki? Goalkeeper saved it! Murray City cannot score penalties this season. Amos saves to his right, makes a smart save. Puki with a hesitation in the run up, and that's one out of five penalties for Norwich this season. And even Timo Puki can't score them. Do you know what? It's a dreadful penalty again, Chris. He's not put his foot through it. He's tried to just clip it and do the keeper. And the keeper's just propelled his time, not made a corner decision for him. Leitner delivers, closes up, and heads the ball behind for the, for the uh, goal kick. Well, well, well. City and penalties. So frustrating, Chris. The, the ones they've missed have all been similar kind of penalties. They're the slow run up, stuttered, trying to clip it into a corner, make the keeper dive before it goes. But come on, just put your foot through it, run up to it, make a decision which side you're going to put it. The keeper's never going to reach it because he's waited so long for Puki to try and you know make the decision. So he, the, every single one that's been missed so far, they've waited for the goalkeeper to try and make the decision before them, and they haven't gone. And then it's too late. You've got to put your foot for it. Kings then 2 0 up now in their game. Chris Henderson, the latest goal scorer against St Ives. They lead 2 0 here. Norwich have just let Millwall off. Puki had scored a goal in this game. And he had a feeling about him that he just couldn't miss in a Norwich City shirt. But penalties are proving a real problem for Norwich this season. And Puki's now missed one. He's the latest player. And it's saved by the goalkeeper. Rhodes 2, Rancic and now Puki missing penalties for Norwich City. I see him looking up to the skies as well. He's. He's a bit disappointed, but do you know what? I mean, how many times have we seen somebody take a penalty this season when they've just scored and, and then missed it? You know, it's, it's, <laughs> do you get that little bit of overconfidence? You know, rather than putting your foot through the ball, you try and be a bit clever. At the other end, off. Millwall have won a throw in, level with the Norwich penalty area, and Ryan Leonard is going to take it, and it will be a long throw, and he bends his back, he launches it into the penalty area. Steekman's there again, it falls for Puki. Brings it outside the box and then puts it out for a throw in. And uh, that's just not the stuffing out of the atmosphere a little bit as well. 1-1. I mean, the game's still there for Norwich City. But it's disbelief, Chris, you know, how the team can miss that many penalties and, and poor penalties. Well, we can't, we can't give him any credit in terms of it's a good save by the keeper. He, he just waits and waits and waits for Puki to play it and then he dives the way he hits it, you know. The keeper's not made a decision to dive before the ball's stuck, with, with, as you would do traditionally as goalkeeper. You pick your side and then dive. He's waited for Puki to, to play the ball almost. And it's becoming a problem for Norwich City. They're winning penalties, but they're not scoring them. Who takes the next one now? Hernandez trying to race forward. Uh, was it clipped there? No. Neil Adams taking the next one, Chris. <laughs> we'll have to bring him on specially. <laughs> Mill will have it on halfway. They go long, out towards the right-hand side. Elliot now teeing up Jed Wallace. Comes to Sean Williams, who's 30 yards from goal. Later, Murray Wallace, the left-back. That they got from Scunthorpe in the summer. Now Shane Ferguson on the outside, determined challenge from Matt Towers. He's going to foul. Him. It's a corner because the ball's gone behind, but he says foul. He's booking him as well, I think. That's a, that's a nonsense. I mean, he's. It is a foot. No, he's not. He's just marked the pitch. But it's, uh, he's won the ball. He's gone for a corner. I mean, Millwall would probably prefer the corner, I would think, but he's given a free kick. Matt Towers has done nothing wrong there. Wins the ball really well. Yeah, I don't think that was a foul. Free kick has been given, though. QPR 2 1 up against Brentford. Steve McLaren's team turning that one round as Norwich probably should have done here. 1-1 it is. Puki scoring one and then missing a penalty. And now we have a Millwall free kick on this left-hand side. Level with the Norwich penalty area. We'll have to weather a bit of a storm at the start of this half of Millwall. They will hope that that missed penalty will turn the tide back in their favour again. Jed Wallace stands over the ball. The former Wolves man who scored in the 4-0 demolition job that Millwall did to Norwich last season. Uh, crosses this one towards the far post, closer wins the header. Falls to Shane Ferguson on the edge of the box. Back it goes to Murray Wallace, who launches another high ball towards the Norwich area. Tim Crawl underneath it, Crawl has been flattered there by Hutchinson. And it's a clear free kick, Millwall have put the ball into the net anyway. Now Crawl doesn't need to react to this, he's got the free kick. It was a foul, but I don't understand why Norwich City are getting involved here with the Millwall attackers, they don't need to. That's because Keelers are so protected, Chris, any little foul they do receive and cause a problem, you know, it's... Uh... They seem to think it's <laughs> no body contact, and it, it generally is with goalkeepers. I don't think the Millwall players did anything wrong there. I'd expect Crawl to react though, if you're collecting the ball in your hands and someone knocks you down and you're falling awkwardly. You know, you could fall awkwardly and do his shoulder or his knee or his ankle. But yes, free kick, get on. <laughs> now, Birmingham 2, Hull 2. Hello, come back from 2 down in that one. And it's QPR 3, Brentford 1 now. Norwich have to go to Hull. 
not long after the international break. We, we, we bounced straight back after the break with two games at Swansea and at Hull in the same week. So there's the wow. championship for you. <laughs> Swansea on the Saturday. Bit of mileage in there, Chris, isn't it? Come on, we, we'll, we, at least our car's got two weeks off for the international break to get ready for it. Tim Krull hits one long for Norwich City. Header one by Millwall, as you'd probably expect, inside their own half. Now he's towed up towards the edge of the Norwich box, crawls out of his area, and will take his frustrations on the ball this time, hammer it forward. Puki getting underneath it, what a mixed <laughs> afternoon he's having. The ball's fallen for Steeperman here, who's then tackled. And it's all got very scrappy since the missed penalty, and the throw for Norwich on the right-hand side. As well as Millwall did in the first half, Chris, they were very calm and balanced and measured. Getting into good areas, they've been pretty poor second half, but that's Lovely. down to Norwich playing well. Lovely from Aarons. Carrying the ball past Gregory on the right-hand side, finding Buendia who spins and doesn't bring really the ball, loses it. All too easily to Lee Gregory, forward he comes. The former Halifax striker, cut out well by Closer. Norwich have it back. Tim Closer trying a trick now, on halfway. Passes it to the right, and Max Aarons. Aarons to Buendia, Aarons again. Here's Moritz Leitner, just inside the Millwall half, back to Max Aarons on the right. Steepman, oh, nice idea, tried to play it through first time to Buendia, but it just got away from the Argentine. And they've got it back again, Millwall. Williams, testing Aarons out here with a ball over the top for Ferguson to chase onto. He's got it, left wing, level with the Norwich penalty area, needs some support, gets it from Murray Wallace, poor pass. Teti intercepts, Norwich have it back, 1-1. Here's Leitner for Norwich, playing it forward quickly to Hernandez. Now Tetic. Jamal Lewis has space. Just over the halfway line here, the Norwich left back. Not going forward with any great pace at the moment. Settling for a short pass to Tetti. Now there will be some pace because it's gone on to O'Neill Hernandez. Left wing, weaving, trying to make something happen here. Hernandez slows it down. Now takes on the fullback. Does brilliantly Hernandez. Gets into the penalty area and eventually loses the ball. Cotton was there, he'd beaten the fullback, but just refused to play the ball across. They beat him four times, Chris, and could have played it in. And now it's come again. Team on top at the moment. Nothing to put behind them, another missed penalty. Here's Buendia. Onto the right-hand side, into the path of Aaron's. His cross sits behind Puki and dealt with by Millwall. <laughs> and Buendia snaps him with a challenge, now it goes for a throw-in. 25 minutes still to play, an intriguing game here. Norwich City 1, Millwall 1 on BBC Radio North. Puki equalising for Norwich at the start of the second half and then having a penalty saved. See Mario Vrancic and Jordan Rhodes warming up for Norwich over on the far side. And Daniel Fark is thinking about a change, I don't know. He'd probably be happier about the second half performance than what his team gave him in the first. No, we haven't caused them as many problems since half time, but it is a 1 1. Here's Leitner. Norwich City here turning and losing it. Leitner, just outnumbered there. And then well, that's cynical from Leitner. He's just. Getting frustrated there, he's clipped Elliot, who goes down, and Leitner's going to be shown a yellow card, and he can't really complain about that. Just give it first one, it doesn't matter anymore, does it? <laughs> yes. I remember the days when you used to be able to get given one, didn't you, in a game? Yeah. That's your one. But when you... that was... I mean, I can understand his frustration, yeah, because... cynical, is, you know, the players... Williams is running away from him, he's got nowhere else he can go. Just trips him up, it's yeah. going to be a free yellow card. And he got himself in a position there where he had two Millwall players on him and nowhere to go. And... Uh, Frustration getting the better of him. It's 1-1, it's a free kick to Millwall on halfway. We know they're a danger from these sort of positions. Hutchison launches one forward, looking for Cooper, but Closer will head it away. Comes to Williams, just inside the Norwich half. Back again to Hutchison, Leitner pushing up on him, trying to make it difficult for the ball to come back, but eventually it does come back. Closer backpedalling, doesn't get there, Zimmerman does. Tries to hook it away, Millwall put it back towards the penalty area. Closer gets his uh, foot up in the air and clears that one away. Titi penalised for jumping with. Gregory uh, for, with uh, Leonard there, and a free kick's been given. I don't think there was a lot in that. No, I think just Tucker does really well. He uses his strength, gets up before him, and, and wins the ball. I don't, I don't see any free kick there at all. Tetti disappointed. He's on a good run at the moment. Tetti. He, he's gone eight games without getting a yellow card, which by by Tetti's standards is quite something. And uh, no card shown there. And a, a free kick now for Millwall halfway inside the Norwich half. And these are the sort of positions they were getting plenty of in the first half and where they got their goal from as well. And they took the lead through Tom Elliott. And the man to watch here is Jake Cooper. Six foot and plenty, the number five. He's gone forward, trying to make some room as the ball is played into the penalty area. Closer heads it away. It might drop here for Moritz Leitner. Difficult one for him to control. Bouncing ball, and in the end all he can do is run it out of play for a throw-in. Millwall turning down the opportunity for a 
the long throw here. It will be Murray Wallace instead on this left wing. Player I just here. wonder if there will be a change, Chris, with Lightning, because he seems to be getting a bit frustrated at the moment as well. He's taking a book in. He's whether they might change it for Vrancic. That's Crosby giving it against Tom Elliott there. Jumping on the edge of the penalty, perhaps pulling the shirt of his marker, and it's a free kick. Yeah, I think Vrancic could do that job that Leitner does. Do it well. Just pass Leitner by a bit today. It's just one of his games where you're playing against a team like Millwall, he's not going to get that sort of time and space no, that he needs. And he's getting frustrated as well by the little cynical fouls he's given away and the fouls that are on him, just those little niggly ones, which are... You know, it's, it's nothing illegal in terms of the game, what the, the players are doing against him, they're just physical. Yeah, and, and actually, in this of all games, you don't want to be giving away those free kicks around the halfway line because Millwall are dangerous. Oh, Elliot throwing off the ground there against Closer. Really was a nasty challenge from Elliot, but he's shown a yellow card. Uh, Closer did so well to ride that challenge. Free kick to North City on halfway. Yeah, he did, because there's a, there's a lot of weight through that, wasn't there? <laughs> if you oh. caught him there. I mean, he, to be fair to Elliot, he is going for the ball. I think he's just overhit it a little bit, make sure he dives in, but you can't go off your feet I think in the modern game. I think he did get the ball, but he only got it because Closer pulled out the challenge. Yeah, because it, yeah. He, he went in so dangerously there, Tom Elliott, and I think Closer's done him a favour. Game breaking up now, lots of little stoppages and free kicks. Haven't had a chance for a while. 1-1 one, one it is. Norwich were one down. Puki with the equaliser, but he's since missed a penalty, and since then, it's gone very flat. Closer. Striding forward for Norwich City. What a run this is. He's gone past three players. Up to the edge of the penalty area and then Russia blood. It's a terrible pass to Stephen. And it goes out. But for a goal kick. What a run from closer. It's pronounced it's him have a shot, Chris. You can dig him. He's in the centre of the park there. He's only what? Six, seven yards outside the 18-yard box and tries to whip one out wide to I think it's to Max Aaron's in the end and, and overhit it. But just have a shot on goal. Even there's somebody in front of you and it gets a deflection off someone. Well, Closer hasn't scored at Carrow Road since that famous equaliser against Ipswich last season. His three this season have all been away. But he, uh, he comes forward with such confidence. Norwich won, Millwall won at Carrow Road. Darkness has well and truly descended now, but it's still not that cold for November. And uh, a really engaging game of football. Quality's dropped a little bit in the last sort of 15 minutes or so. Leitner, that's good skill from him, inside his own half. Leitner, oh, and he just can't quite get Pukki away with the long, ambitious pass. Hutchison cut it out. Wasn't far from dropping nicely for the finish striker, though. Foul by Hernandez, just levering the Millwall defender off the ball. Free kick to Millwall over on the far side there, right. Aston Villa have got a goal up at Derby. From John McGinn, Derby, one of the teams involved in the pack at the top of the table. They drop points today. Will Norwich City, 20 minutes to go. Norwich 1, Millwall 1. Bit of movement perhaps down there. Yeah, it seems as if somebody's come back to the bench, whether he's going to... Yeah, that was Ben Godfrey. Oh, he's just sitting down again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know, the, the, the fourth official's getting his board ready, so I think... So, oh, and Millwall are back to bring Steve Morrison on, aren't they? Look. And header away there by close-up, climbing. Out it goes. Yeah, the Millwall staff have all got these dark blue tracksuits on. They're exactly the same colour as the playing kit, yeah. so it's difficult from this distance to pick out when a substitute gets to his feet, but Morrison just has. Millwall on the attack. Gregory holds it in play. Good defending there from Jamal Lewis. Great defending. Now it's left back. He's dribbled it round Jeb Wallace. And now accelerates up towards the halfway line here. Wallace gets the tackle in though. And Mill will have possession back inside the Norwich half. Williams. Uh, it's hit the heels of Tom Elliott and fallen kindly for Williams, who scoops it this time out to the right. Here's Jed Wallace. Level with the penalty area. Right wing cutting in. Jamal Lewis with another good tackle. Throwing to Millwall. Uh, Ryan Leonard is going to go across and take this, and that will probably mean a long throw in. And they're going to look to get Steve Morrison on before that. I wonder if they'll take Elliot off after that yellow card that he's he's been given. Gregory as well, the other striker will be a candidate, you would think. But um, Morrison, like the rest of us, is going to get to watch this long throw in from the side of the pitch. 19 to go. Norwich one, Millwall one. Here it comes. Ryan Leonard again launching it into the penalty area. Leitner does well, calmly chesting it down bringing it out to the left-back position and then firing it up the field for Puki to chase. And Puki will chase. And Hutchison goes back to his goalkeeper, Amos. He takes a touch, keeper on loan from Bolton, and then right-footed clears it towards the halfway line, where it's won by Millwall. Falls for Gregory here, up to the edge of the box he goes. Zimmerman does well just to see him away from goal. Millwall, though, have now got it towards Elliott on the edge of the penalty area. Central position, turns, shoots! And Krull makes it a fairly comfortable save. There wasn't a lot of power on it. No, it does well enough to turn, I think. 
Simu gets close enough to him just to lean on him so he can't get the full power into his shot and crawl down nice and easy to his left-hand side. But I think it's probably the first shot they've had in the game that's actually made Crawl make a save. Huddersfield won West Ham one in the Premier League. Alex Pritchard had given Huddersfield the lead. Felipe Anderson with the equaliser for West Ham. Ball's gone out of play. It feels like it might need a change now, doesn't it, Darren? It's gone very quiet and very, very flat from a Norwich point of view. Yeah, I think, well, from both sides, but, you know, certainly Mill will be the, the happier with the point when they take away from Carrow Road. They are taking off their goal scorer, Elliot, and they're bringing on Steve Morrison, who we know all about. Had that prolific start to his Norwich score career. Steve Morrison, Premier League. He scored 11 in 59 games in the end for the Canaries, and he replaces Tom Elliott. And, and this will be more of the same, won't it? Yeah, you'd think so. And again, playing against your old team, you're always a little bit more desperate to try and score as well. And we did score here last season for Millwall, and they were 1 0 up on New Year's Day. Norwich turned that one round, though. Tribal and Madison are goal scorers. Norwich won that game. I think, as well, he, he probably feel a little bit aggrieved that he was. Let go by Norwich. I think he was. You know, he, I, I felt he did a good job for Norwich, and uh, yeah, became one of those players that was surplus requirements. 35 years old now, and uh, up he goes to compete straight away in the air with Max Ahrens. Tetty will clear high, headed away by Millwall. Tetty plays it forward. Steepman making a use of himself. Oh, Bandia has been penalised there. I thought. Well, that referee actually could have given that either way, couldn't he? Both players were committed to the challenge, but the free kick has gone Millwall's way. Murray Wallace, who won the ball. Yeah, I think he's Wallace has got there just before Buendia has, and Buendia had already committed himself, so when the ball goes forward from a Millwall player, and they both end up on the floor, the referee's always like to give a free kick to the to the team who's played the ball forward. Derby now less than Villa 2. Tammy Abraham with the latest Villa goal in that one. Interesting. 16 minutes to go. Norwich won, Millwall won. Millwall had a free kick. The referee is sending Jake Cooper back into his own half to take it. We think they'd want Cooper up the other end of the field and involved in this. But the former Reading man, big bean pole centre half, is going to be the man who will whack it forward. And he's got good distance on it towards the penalty area. Closer against Morrison. The ball drops in the Norwich penalty area. Shot comes in over the bar from Jed Wallace. But that's the problem with those set pieces. Even if you win the first ball, it's where the next ball drops, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Winning those seconds is, is, is a common statement we hear a lot, but Morris doesn't even win it. It's, it's won by, won by um, Close, I think, and the ball drops down and can't quite control the volley. Yeah, it's so important we talk about second balls. Yep. Birmingham 2, Hull 3. If Birmingham were 2 up in that one. They're in decent form at the moment. Hull struggling, but they've come from 2 down to lead 3 2 in the Championship. 1 1 at Carrow Road. Tetty for Norwich City. Goes back to goalkeeper Tim Krull. And Krull, first time, sprays the pass to Max Ahrens. The 18 year old Max Ahrens. 12th successive league game that he started. And uh, I think he's looked the part in all of them. Max Ahrens, it's incredible. You don't want to you know, put too much on a youngster, but he's been so impressive in his uh, first few months as a, a championship footballer. Leitner gets the ball back into his own half now to Closer, everyone back for Millwall here. Closer, coming forward almost at training ground pace, and then angling the ball to the right and finding Max Ahrens. Now a little bit more zip about Norwich City. Wendia turning away from Ferguson, a determined challenge from the Northern Ireland man. And Steepman rolls into the path of Ahrens, a back heel from Ahrens. Steepman can't quite get there in the penalty area, but he still keeps going, slides in, doesn't win the ball, and Millwall should clear, and they do clear up towards halfway, where Gregory can't win the first ball. Zimmerman just has a look over his shoulder to make sure that he's got the situation under control, and back it goes to Tim Crook. 1-1, 14 minutes to go. Can Norwich find the goal that will put them back on top of the pile in the Championship? Closer, goes through the middle. Pookie couldn't get there, dealt with by Millwall. Gregory chests it down on halfway. Zimmerman's let him get away with that one a little bit. And uh, now closer this time's the challenge. And Millwall able just to keep the ball a little too easily here inside Norwich territory. Here's Ferguson on the left-hand side. Aaron's makes the challenge, Ferguson throws himself down, it's a free kick. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so obvious what this player's going to do, Chris, but Millwall in particular will do it more and more because they then get themselves into a set-piece position where they can launch the ball into the box. And just a little bit, I guess, a little bit of naivety and, and eagerness by Max Aaron's there to try and win the ball back. He's not doing anything wrong, but... I think you know, an experienced player would know he's just going to go to the floor, especially when they want to hit the balls into the area they're going to now. Another test for this Norwich defence. 1-1, 13 minutes to play. Sean Williams, the former MK Dons man, 
angles the free kick into the penalty area, closer up first. Seemed to hang in the air for a long time, wins the header, but it's back in the Norwich box again now. This time Zimmerman clears, and Leitner kicks out Buendia here. Still deep inside his own half, Buendia, but he's got the pass away. An ambitious one over the top for Hernandez, cut out by Millwall. McLaughlin hits it long. And Zimmerman does enough to make sure Gregory can't get there, before it goes to Tim Krull. Still 1-1. Premier League, Southampton 1, Watford 1. Holabas with the Watford equaliser. There's St Mary's, here's Hernandez, back to goal, turns now. Just inside the Watford half, Steepman popping up on the left-hand side, he's released Hernandez, in the penalty, Hernandez across, just behind Puki, and too far in front of Buendia. And Millwall should clear, just could not get that ball right. Hernandez after a good play down the Norwich line. Yeah, he didn't do one or the other well enough, did he? If he's going to cross that, he needs to put a better ball into for Puki, who makes a, a brilliant run, oh, he's got to hit it himself. Yeah, I took him out. in me in that position, I would have hit the shot, because if the keeper makes a save, it, it drops to Puki anyway. And he put it between Puki and Buendia. Sort of position that Norwich have already scored from in this game. Maybe they could have used that left-hand side a little bit more in this half, because they have had joy. 1-1. Closer, looking for Hernandez. Hernandez turning again here. Halfway inside the Millwall half. Gives it to Alexander Tetti. He's got Steepman behind him. Steepman wide to the right, finds Max Aarons. Aaron's now, corner of the penalty area, back again to Stieferman, long way out, Stieferman goes for goal, it's blocked, comes back to Stieferman, who brings it towards the penalty area, Aaron's with the chance to cross, oh, it's cleared by Millwall as far as Morris Leitner, who will shoot! <laughs> Disappointed that his goal has now been cancelled out because it was a lovely finish from the German. Plays it back to Zimmerman. Norwich 2, Millwall 2. Leitner, right hand side. Finds Buendia. Norwich will keep going. Stiefman on to Buendia. Great skill from Buendia, 25 yards out here. Thinks about the shot, keeps going. Now shoots! Oh, that wasn't far away. That really wasn't far away from Emmy Buendia, just wide. Well, it's a decent enough shot in the end as well, and we all kind of looked at it, waiting for the net to bulge, but. He had an opportunity to hit it two or three touches before he finally did hit it, and 
he almost gave himself a more difficult angle to hit by, by taking those extra couple of touches. There's still a decent enough shot, but I thought he could have just hit it one or two touches before. I think you're right. Uh, Blackburn nil, Rotherham one. Full norms, Rotherham. The goal up at Blackburn have been doing well this season. Wow, what a, what a twist we've had at the end here. Norwich in front with ten minutes to go through Moritz Leitner, a lovely goal. But then they switched off and allowed Ryan Leonard to break through and score. And it's 2-2. And again, Fuki's missed penalty, <laughs> looks crucial again. Header on from Millwall again, Norwich need to deal with this one, they do better this time. Well, then Light has lost it though, to Jed Wallace, 25 yards out into the penalty area it goes, Aaron's told to leave it, you can hear this shout from Tim Krull up here, and the ball's come back to, to Krull. A QPR 3, Brentford 2. Oh, Krull's running it straight out to the Millwall player, Wallace, what a mistake that is! Jed Wallace comes forward, finds up Morrison, back to Jed Wallace who scores! And Millwall A quick exchange with Steve Morrison, and now Millwall are in front at Carrow Road. There's disbelief around the ground. The Millwall players pile on top of each other. How did that happen? Norwich 2, Millwall 3. Well, 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 there's only one reason that's happened, Chris, is Tim Krull's trying to get their tempo up again. I, I can't blame him for that. Norwich have just dropped after Millwall equalised, but it's a sloppy throw right across his box and goes straight to Jed Wallace, and they still had a little bit to do, to be fair. Plays a 1-2, gets it back, and Tim Krull even gets a touch on it to try and make a save, but it goes into the goal, and it's just an awful, shocking mistake by Tim Krull. Um, same end as he made the mistake earlier on in the season as well, you know, something about that goal for him. I, I agree with him, he needs to get the tempo going again, but his players weren't ready, and he tries to sling the ball out. It was a shocking throw. To say, but there's still a lot to do, though, Chris. You know, he's, he's still, what, just inside the final third of Norwich's half. We would have played a 1-2 and manages to tuck it in, fair play to Millwall, but all Norwich's own doing, both of those goals. Elsewhere, Reading 2, Ipswich 2, an equaliser for Reading, but how this game has turned. Norwich went 2-1 up with 10 minutes to go, and they're now 3-2 down with 6 minutes to go. Millwall have scored two goals here and have absolutely stunned Carrow Road. Gregory, Norwich have been so good in, in positions in, in games in recent weeks where they've been in front, they've protected leads so well, but what have they done there? Disbelief. It's almost like panic stations as well, Chris, isn't it? Because they are on such a good one, they want, they want to ring, get, win games, and I can't blame Krull for trying to get the game going quickly again to lift the tempo, because Norwich has certainly had drop, but if you're going to do that, you've got to make sure you're throwing it to, is ready for it, and, you, and you've got the, the ability to be able to throw it there. And now the action switches to the Norwich end here, with Steepman crossing into the penalty area, behind it goes, goal kick given. Broke off Puki, who thumps the... not Puki, sorry, Buendia, who thumps the ball into the ground in frustration, is going to be shown the yellow card. Well, absolutely incredible. There was about a minute between the goal from Leitner that put Norwich 2-1 up, the great goal it was, and then the Millwall equaliser, and then only about another two and a half minutes later, Jed Wallace has scored, and Millwall lead 3-2, Buendia is booked, and Norwich City here find themselves behind again. Steepman's being replaced by Mario Vrancic. And Jamal Lewis is coming off as well for Jordan Rhodes to come on as Norwich look to try and get themselves back into this one, Darren Eady. Yeah, they've, they've thrown the dice now and they've got to, haven't they? But we go back to when Norwich struggled at the start of the season and we talked a lot about individual errors and it's been nothing other than that today, is it, really? The, the goals that they've conceded, particularly the last two, have been individual errors and you can't account for that as a manager. That's the frustrating part. You can work as much as you like on the training field about shape and discipline, but to make those individual stupid mistakes and switch off. And uh, Millwall are making a change as well. Ferguson, who's currently down injured, is going to come off to be replaced by the winger Ryan Tunnicliffe. But uh, Hill's going to take a long time to get off the field. And, and you can just feel that, that the disbelief around the ground. Fans at Carrow Road had reacted with such delight when Leitner scored that brilliant goal with 10 minutes to go. Norwich 2 1 up. And that the way they've been playing recently, you thought, well, that's it, that they've got yeah. this game now, that they've yeah. defended so well recently, but they've completely switched off. And, and to be 3 2 down now with, with three minutes to go. It's almost unbelievable, Chris, isn't it? And to say it's individual errors, and that's something we. We, we pointed at them at the start of the season and, and to the back end of last season was those kind of individual mistakes that they were making and conceding stupid goals. 
not through the quality of Millwall playing, you know, it's not through their endeavour and their quality. They've been pretty poor second half and all of a sudden they find themselves leading. Well, the change made by Millwall. I think we're going to have ample stoppage time. Blackburn have equalised against Rotherham. Birmingham have equalised against Hull. So it's 3-3 in that one and 1-1 between Blackburn and Rotherham. Norwich here, their home record this season, before today, in the league, 1-5 and lost three. Haven't had any draws at Carrow Road yet this season in the league. We take one now. Norwich going 2-1 up here with ten minutes to go. And now they find themselves 3-2 down. This is another test for them. Leitner plays one forward, but it's all a little bit rushed now from Norwich, who've gone to three at the back with Teti, Zimmerman and Closer playing as the back three in order to get Rhodes and Puki on the pitch at the same time. Leitner plays the ball from the right wing all the way over to the left, where Tim Closer is waiting for it. Takes a long time to arrive at his feet, though. Works it on to Emi Buendia. Brancic, one of the other subs, is in front of it. Buendia plays it now. It's not a great ball. It'll probably go behind for the goal kick. Brancic does his best, but it is a goal kick. Just that uh, composure in the final third lacking for Norwich. They've been so reliable, haven't they, Norwich? They've, they've been Christian in recent weeks with how well they've, they've done. Now what have we got here? A change being made. Lee Gregory going off foot for Millwall, and they're bringing on another defender, as they may well. James Meredith, the Australian, who went to the World Cup and didn't make an appearance. He's going to come on for the striker, Gregory. I was going to say, Darren, I mean, Norwich were... They've been so good in games recently, they've got themselves in front and not looked in much danger. But today, you're right, they've gone back to what was costing them the first few weeks of the season, haven't they? Yeah, they have, but I think, you know, as we said before the game today, you know, that mistakes will happen and, and there will be games where Norwich are not at their best and, and they lose them. It, so much for me is that if they do go on and lose this game today, it's, it's a reaction to the next game they have. You know, they've got a long break now because of the international break, which isn't, isn't ideal, but it is about that reaction. You've got to think, you know, forget about it quite quickly. Isn't that... It says something about the championship, though, doesn't it? The Norwich fans were singing, we are top of the league. And the moment they sung that, <laughs> it all started to go wrong. It's so many teams this season have got themselves up there in the championship and then faltered. And it's Norwich's turn now. 3-2 down at home to Millwall after an astounding spell of three goals in five minutes. Here's Teti on halfway for Norwich City. To Onel Hernandez, who's on the right-hand side. We've got 30 seconds of normal time to go. Moritz Leitner skates inside. His goal already seems a long time ago, and it was only about ten minutes. Here's Closer. Plays it forward here, positive ball. Francic in the penalty area, closed down quickly and tackled, and it's cleared. Norwich here, a Millwall rather, have only got Steve Morrison up front now. They're going to try to hold on to what they've got, and you can't blame them. Here's Leitner for Norwich City. Plays one forward here, looking for Puki, who's onside. Right edge of the penalty area, Timu Puki. Uses Onel Hernandez for support. Hernandez takes on the man who's just come on, Meredith, right wing. Back it comes to Leitner, plenty in the penalty area for Leitner to aim for. One of them's closer, it's a looping header, and it's come towards this right-hand side. Six minutes of stoppage time coming up. A lot can happen in six minutes, as you've already seen in this game. Hernandez, right wing, turning, tackled. Four breaks for Teti, though, infield to Leitner. Mill will have plenty of players back, protecting this 3-2 lead. Here's Vrancic, lovely scoot ball into the area. Puki to the right of goal, his attempted cross is smothered. But Vrancic goes for it again. He's tackled and Millwall clear. It's going to be back to the wall now for Millwall for these final six minutes of stoppage time as Teti levers the ball away from Steve Morrison. Good play from the Norwich captain. He's actually playing as a defender now in this game, but he's halfway inside the Millwall half. By the time he finds Leitner, on to Emi Buendia. Long, long way out, plenty of Millwall players between him and the goal. Wide to the left and Tim Closer, back to Buendia, who accelerates, rolls it into the area, Jordan Rhodes is on the side, Jordan Rhodes scores! Timu Puki will be relieved. 
Goals given away, missed penalties. What a second half we brought you here on BBC Radio Norfolk this afternoon. Oh, near Leitner nearly losing the ball on halfway, but closer drives one forward. Millwall cut it out. Brancic to the left hand side. That was a foul. Free kick to Norwich City. It was a nasty one as well. And the yellow card is going to come out for Conor McLaughlin. Yes, it is. So the, the fullback has been shown the yellow card. Well, Rhodes coming on and doing what he does. That as soon as he got the ball in that position, I looked nervously at the linesman to see whether the flag went up. It didn't, and he knew Rhodes was going to score. Yeah, it's a, it a wonderful pass by Buendia from the left hand side. He cut in, and I think we all thought he was going to shoot with his right foot. Pings the ball in with his right foot into Jordan Rhodes, who's in acres of space and took it past the keeper. Like that, free kick left hand side, aims it into a packed penalty area. It's a good delivery. Millwall have cleared. And as far as Tim Closer shoots from the edge of the area, it's charged down. Falls for Tetty on the right hand side. Puki wants it on the right, but instead Tetty goes himself, plays it back to Zimmerman. Zimmerman to Buendia. Buendia looking to open up Millwall again here. He's given it to Tetty on the edge of the area. Tetty, he shoots. Oh dear, over here, that's high to the bottom tier of the Barclays stand. A rush of blood for Tetti. It's finished 2-2 for Ipswich at Reading. They were in front twice in that game. We've got plenty of time left here because of all the stoppage time. It is Millwall 3, Norwich 3. This game was 1-1 with 10 minutes to go. And now, with uh, three and a half minutes of stoppage time played, it's 3-3. What a strange afternoon. <laughs> plenty to discuss on Canary Club. Got goalkeeper from Millwall. Started, restarted since that Tetty shot that was well wide. Norwich had thrown the kitchen sink at this one, haven't they? Having gone 3 2 down. What do they do now? They, they're still entitled to make one more change if they want to. And it's all any sort of pre match planning, tactical thinking has gone now. It's just about who does what in these final few moments, and that's a terrible mistake by Tetty at the back there. And Millwall have got it again here. Tunnicliffe, the substitute, slips it to the right-hand side, McLaughlin coming forward, he crosses the ball into the penalty area, Zimmerman rises and heads the ball away, and Buendia gets his head down, and he makes it his, under pressure from Tunnicliffe, inside his own half, tremendous from Buendia, and he slips it to Brancic, and now Norwich trying to sweep forward, but it's a bad pass from Brancic, behind Aaron's and out for a throw in, 3-3. <laughs> you just don't know, do you, in football, it's absolutely extraordinary, absolutely incredible. A little bit lost for words, Chris, I think, with this last time. How do you sum this game up? Well, you're quite second right. half. It's yeah. one that's just don't really have any words. And uh, Canary call coming up after the game with Darren and with Rob Butler. I think under a 3897, 3 2 1. Are you getting more or less optimistic about Norwich's promotion hopes after this? Remember, they've missed a penalty in this game as well. Again, they scored four last for Brancic. has put enough on that for a you know, I'm actually not sure if I'm pleased or disappointed with a point uh, exactly. so far. I, I've no idea. Exactly. There have been times in this game where you thought, well, Norwich is going to go on and win this. And other times where... Well, you know, they, they were 3-2 down on, on 90 minutes, let's not forget. And 1-0 down at half-time, but it's now 3-3. We're into the sixth minute of stoppage time. Long throw in forward from Millwall. It's come off a Norwich head. It's going to roll behind for a corner here. A Millwall corner in the sixth minute of stoppage time. Norwich have got to defend this. They have got to defend this. You could hear that ooze all around the, the stadium, worry. can you? Yeah. I don't know what worry sounds like, or I didn't until a few moments ago, I do now. You can see Millwall, though, are just slightly reluctant to commit men forward, but they've got to, haven't they? Yeah, look, I think they'll be more than happy with a point after today's performance, but uh, what they are good at is set pieces, so this is an opportunity for them. Norwich have brought everybody back. There's the corner, played into the Norwich penalty area. There's Norwich player down, and the referee eventually decides they should get a free kick. So, later, maybe you try for one last Norwich attack. It's 3-3 at Carrow Road. It's been a thrilling afternoon in the Championship. Zimmerman to Buendia. Buendia sets off over the halfway line, perhaps for one last time. Slides it to Closer on the left-hand side. Closer now. Halfway inside the mill wall, half. Lays it off for Buendia. Buendia, lovely. Franchet, judge of the penalty area. Through for Pukki. Is this the chance for Pukki? Yes! <laughs>
joining us. If you're just switching your radio on, let me just tell you what's happened at Carrow Road this afternoon. Millwall won the lap at half time. Tom Elliott heading into the set piece. Norwich equalised. Ball is into the second half through Timo Puki. Then on the hour, they should have taken the lead. Puki had a penalty saved. But it didn't look like it was going to matter because at 80 minutes, Norwich Lightner politely drove home from 20 yards. His first goal at Carrow Road to put Norwich 2 on up. Thank <laughs> you. 